Welcome back. Now we're going to cover the theory behind the power conducted through a material. Okay, so we have the equation power is equal to conductivity K times the surface area times the change in temperature, the difference of the temperature of the two materials divided by the thickness of the material, so dt over dx. So I'm going to explain this and then give you some examples of the conductivity of different materials. And then in the next video, we'll talk about how conductors add up in series and parallel. Okay, so uh, you can see here what this equation uh, means is that the power is given in watts. Okay, this is the power that is transmitted from the inside to the outside or from the outside to the inside, depending on if the, if the outside is warmer, then the heat is going to flow inward, right? It's going to flow inward this way. And if the outside was cooler than the inside of a house, then the, the heat would flow the, towards the outside, right? So this is telling you how much heat is flowing per unit ton. Uh, watts is measured in units of joules per second, so it's measuring how much heat is flowing per unit time. Conduction is the primary form of heat transfer through solids, okay? Whereas convection is the primary form of heat transfer through liquids and gases. So the conduction dominates in solids, okay? So the K is the conductivity of the material, so it would be measured in watts uh, per meter square and then Celsius, and then the, the units of the K have to be such that the two units work out to be the same, right? So the surface area is going to be measured in meters squared. The change in temperature, remember, any equation that relies on the change in temperature of something can be measured in Celsius. You don't have to do Kelvin because the change in temperature of Kelvin and Celsius are the same. So this one is going to be Celsius. And then the change in the x is going to be meters, right? So the meter is going to cancel the meter, right? So what units does the k have to have? Well, in order to work out, it has to have units of watts per meter Celsius. So we can change here meter Celsius. And then, of course, the Celsius will cancel the Celsius. The meter will cancel the meter. And then the watts will equal to the watts, right? Now, what does the surface area mean? It's the cross-sectional surface area. So it would be the surface area coming out of the... Uh, board right here, right? So we, if we want to draw this in 3D, we could say something like this, okay? Then it would have a thickness like this, like that. And then the inside of the house would be something like this, right? So the, the, <coughs> the surface area would be this surface area right here. So the cross-sectional surface area through which the heat is flowing, right? So the, the surface area coming uh, out of the board, right? So of course the house is going to lose heat not only through the left side, but it, if it, uh, it's going to lose heat through the top, through the roof, right? And then it's going to lose heat through the sides, and it's also going to lose heat to the ground, right? So what this is saying is that the bigger the surface area of the house, the more heat it loses or the more heat that it gains, right? So a house that covers a bigger surface area is going to lose more heat and gain more heat. So that makes sense. So this is the surface area. And then the dx is going to be the thickness of the material, right? Delta x, right? So the thicker the, the wall of the house, the better it is for you, right? So the bigger this number, the bigger the thickness, the less power you will lose. So it is good to have a bigger, thicker wall and to also have... Uh, in order for insulation to be good, you want to have the conductivity low. So if you want, for purposes of low power, so you want less heat to come in and less heat to go out, you want the conductivity to be low, and you want the thickness to be uh, large, and you want the surface area of the house to be small. And then the change in temperature, well, that one you don't have much control over. It's the difference between the inside temperature of the house and the outside temperature. So the outside temperature on a cold winter day is going to be cool. The inside of the house, you want it to be warmer. So you want this one to be larger. And then, of course, on a warm day, the outside temperature is going to be hotter. So that is determined by the conditions of the, the situation, depending on what season it is, right? So um, this is also true not just for houses, but also any other material that is losing heat. It could be a cup of uh, hot soup, right? So it, it goes like this. Let's say uh, you, you're drinking a cup of water, a cup of hot coffee, or you're from a bowl, you're drinking soup, right? So the, the cup is going to have a certain thickness like this, 
and the material is going to lose heat through the walls of that cup, right, like this, like this, like this, and like that. And of course, it's going to also radiate its heat through the top. Equation for radiation we've already covered in the previous videos. That is, uh, P is equal to A sigma E T to the power 4. So this one is the equation for conduction, the heat conductor through the walls of the material. So in this case, it would be the through the sides of the cup, right? So if you have two cups, one cup is like this, the same cup of coffee in a narrower cup, but just longer up, what's going to happen to the surface area? So the surface area here, uh, the all around, the surface area is going to increase. So you're going to be losing more heat due to conduction, like this. And of course, the ultimate limit of that is if the cup is very, very narrow, right, like this, and the water, the coffee will go up higher up the cup, right? What's going to happen to the surface area? This surface area is even uh, more, right? So the surface area is increasing. So you will be losing more heat through the sides and through the bottom due to conduction. So in general, therefore, if you want less heat transfer due to conduction, you want a wider, a bigger cup this way, so that uh, the surface area here of contact is going to be less. Okay. Heat loss uh, through uh, the power radiation is going to be the opposite. So this one will lose more heat, lose more heat due to radiation, due to radiation, and then this one will lose less heat due to radiation. Lose uh, less heat. All right. This one will uh, lose more heat due to conduction because the surface area is uh, bigger, right? But it will lose less heat due to radiation. Generally, you can see from there that uh, in order to reduce the power lost or power gained, uh, we want the surface area to be less and we want the thickness to be more and we want the conductivity to be less, okay? So what are conductivities of some materials? Let's uh, put them down here. The conductivity is going to equal, uh, aluminum is going to be 238 watts per meter Celsius. So what does that mean? If the uh, material here is aluminum, then you're going to be losing or gaining 238 watts of heat per every meter of aluminum, per every Celsius difference between the inside and the outside. So for every one Celsius difference, for every one meter, you're going to be losing 238 watts. So literally what this means is if the inside of a material, right, let's say the inside, 238 joules of heat for every second, that's how much heat will be coming in. And then that heat will, of course, go into warming up the inside, and eventually the inside temperature will reach the same temperature as the outside. And then after that, there will be no heat flow, right? So that's what the 238 means. The conductivity of silver is going to be 427 watts per meter Celsius, right? So it's going to be larger than the aluminum. The conductivity of copper is going to be 397 watts per meter Celsius, right? And then we can keep listing some other ones so we can compare them. The conductivity of uh, lead is going to be 34.7 watts per meter Celsius. So from the metals, from the ones listed, the silver is very high, 427. Lead is the least, which is 34.7, right? But generally speaking, the metals have very high conductivities. That's why if the metal is hot and you touch your finger on it, you all quickly uh, yank your finger away and you say, ouch, right? The heat transfers from the hot metal to your fingers, right? Uh, now, the materials that are less heat conductive, right? Uh, that would be other materials. Okay, concrete is going to be 0.8 watts per meter Celsius, right? 0.8 watts per meter Celsius. Well, even though concrete is much less than lead and much less than the metals, it still has high heat conductivity because on a hot day, if you're if you're barefoot on a concrete your uh, foot will also be hurting, right? You will say, ouch, right? So you will burn. So there are materials that even are less than concrete. So then we have here conductivity of glass is 0.8 watts per meter Celsius. 
glass, which is similar to concrete, even glass, if you have a cup of hot water in glass, you won't be able to hold it too long. Your, uh, your uh, fingers will hurt, right? So even glass, we can know from, we, we see from experience that it has a high conductivity. Then we have conductivity of ice is 2.0 uh, watts per meter Celsius. Conductivity of water, 0.6 watts per meter Celsius. So water's conductivity is less conductive than ice. So uh, if you touch a, a cube of ice, right, uh, your finger will get uh, kind of cold after a while. You will transfer, your, the heat will transfer from your finger to the ice, right? You can see that uh, ice has a larger heat conductivity and you know that from experience. If you touch ice, you will, um, your heat will transfer from your hand to the ice, right? But water's heat conductivity is less. So if you put your uh, uh, hand in a warm cup of water, you won't hurt as much because not as much heat will transfer from the water to your hand. So it's 0.6. Uh, so now we get to other materials. Conductivity of wood, 0.08 watts per meter Celsius. Well, you've seen this also from experience. If you have a hot wood and you touch the hot wood, you're not going to burn as quickly, right? You're not going to feel the pain as quickly because not as much heat will transfer to your hand as quickly, right? So 0 0.08. And then you have a conductivity of helium, 0.138 watts per meter Celsius. So this gives you an example of the conductivity of gases too. Gases conduct heat, so it's a 0.138. So it's larger than wood, but it is less than water and less than glass and concrete, right? Conductivity of air, the regular air we breathe, that would be 0 0.023 watts per meter Celsius. So it's going to be even less than wood, right? It's uh, quite a lot less than helium, and it's also quite a lot less than wood. And then conductivity of oxygen, 0 0.0238 watts per meter Celsius. So pretty much the same as air, but uh, maybe slightly larger because it's 0 0.0238, which would round up to 0 0.024, right? So this gives you examples of some different materials conductivity. And then um, in the next video, we will talk about how conductors add up in series and parallel. Thank you very much.